Dear students, it is the second video for the week six and we are learning the era of development. The era, the era of Ayub Khan. In the first video, we learned the background that how Ayub Khan came into power and later on his dynamic personality put Pakistan on the right, right track. Well, we also discussed the agriculture reform brought by Ayub Khan because the experts of the world like Dr. Mahbubul Haq has has convinced Ayub Khan to mobilize the industrial sector, the, the agriculture sector. And resultantly, Pakistan made mega change in the agriculture. Now, the second step is industrial reforms. Agriculture reforms provide the basics for the industry because for industry, you know, uh, we need the raw material. That's for example that the uh, textile industry. For textile, you know cotton. Pakistan is one of the best cotton producing countries and therefore the textile was built in, promoted in Karachi, Faisalabad, Lahore, and certain other regions. Okay, okay. sugar cane. That is also a uh, agri product. It was promoted. Okay, and there were so many things. So let's have what industrial reforms General Ayub Khan brought to Pakistan. Ayub Khan introduced some industrial reforms to increase the export and to reduce the import and therein to enhance Pakistan economy. He did many things. For example, he provided attractive incentives to the foreign investors to come and invest in Pakistan. Okay. And one of the main incentive was export bonus scheme, EBS. Okay. Which also attracted the foreign plus the local investors to invest in Pakistan. He opened more industries for the sake of employment and fulfilling the local demands of demands like food and oil, okay, and uh, clothing and many things. And these industries included oil and gas development projects that started and for example the Atuk oil refinery and many other projects. This was a time when Pakistan built dams, large dams to promote agriculture. Okay. And Mangla Dam was one of the example of that type of activities. Hydro Electric power plants were also set up in order to deal with the electricity crisis of Pakistan. You understand this, that dams simply not brought the betterment in, in, in the agriculture sector, but they have brought in lots. For example, dams provided power to agriculture. Clay power means uh, facilitated agriculture and agriculture areas were irrigated and more and more uh, crops were reaped and collected and later on they were uh, sent to the outer world and Pakistan gained revenue. For industry, electricity is the basic need and thermal electricity is uh, one of the very basic type of electricity which Pakistan produced. So these dams came with the power generation for Pakistan and it helped the factories and mills to run their units. Plus, 
the electricity was provided to the people in cities and towns and even to some villages and it promoted the local business the life of the people was uplifted they uh, came to know with the uh, standard of their time moreover pakistan iran and turkey came with an economic alliance okay these three countries pakistan iran and turkey and you understand that these three countries at that time were under the strong influence of america they were the strong friends of america pakistan ayub khan in iran it was the shah iran who was the very close friend of america and also was the close friend of pakistan and turkey fine so the countries also were and also the military played a middle role in these country therefore naturally they were quite friends okay and they made alliance economic alliance clear and they developed the uh, uh regional cooperation for rcd regional cooperation development uh, they made uh, what we say uh federation or something sorry federation i'm saying they developed a tanzim okay and uh, this was a project between three muslim countries to facilitate development okay and uh, this rcd started in 1964 furthermore pakistan with the assistance of chinese aid managed to build several several large scale industries clear and therefore the reforms of ayub khan decreased the inflation rate in pakistan and this was the time when pakistan economy flourished remember that pakistan and china has quite a healthy relation which developed in time of times of ayub khan ayub khan offered a very generous uh generous consensus on the boundary dispute with china clear and later on chinese started revive their silk route and pakistan came into uh, relations pakistan sacrificed for example pakistan built uh, uh, developed the route uh, pakistan clarified the confusions of americans and chinese because chinese remained under the control of america and they disliked chinese emerged as a power pakistan uh, played the role of a middle person and mediated their relations okay and the president of america visited china and a new era of cooperation started between the two opposite nations okay however a disadvantage that led to the occupation of 66% of industries and 80% of the banking insurance companies by only 22 families here it is one of the major objection on the industrial reforms that at that time the people close to the ruler they took they became very cunning and they took the wealth 66% of industries and 80% of the banking and insurance came under the those families well this act created serious resentment among the people of east pakistan present in bangladesh and this economic imperity really uh created the bengalis because the most of the economic projects they claimed are there in pakistan they believe that all the policies are made by the people of the west pakistan and there is quite less development in the east pakistan whereas the budget is more consumed in pakistan these issues were very basic which led pakistan finally to a uh, swear crisis of the history in 1971 okay dear students before i start with the economic reforms i would like to say that industry is one of the very crucial sector for the development all the countries of the current 
and the past. Industrial reforms have to be made. Therefore, General Ayub Khan did this in the best. He hired the experts from the foreign. They came here. They established vocational institutes. They vocational technical institutes. Okay. They started different programs in mechanical engineering and others. And finally, the human resource development came. The people who didn't own the land, okay, they were able to get school education, get the uh, education in these uh, technical and polytechnic colleges, okay, and further they went as a human resource to other countries and a new class of the people uh, established in Pakistan, we now can say the middle class. Administrative reforms. Ayub Khan when came into power, decided to last his rule and sustain his power. Okay. He introduced 1962 constitution in which the president of Pakistan had all the powers. Okay. He can break the assemblies at any time. Okay. And These were the major. Uh, these were some of the major points of the 1962 Constitution. 1962 Constitution is highly criticized because here one rule was neglected, that is the separation of power, that the powers should be handed over to the all the organs of the state equally, the powers of the parliament, the power of the executives, the power of the judiciary and maybe this constitution was uh, static in nature rigid in nature in which there was no relaxation and uh, interest for the others that's why this constitution was also considered to be a failure okay ayub khan introduced basic democracy clear it is called BD members, clear? And basic democracy was that there were no elections of national assemblies and provincial assemblies. Directly, the municipal corporation and the municipal level, councillor level people, they were involved, okay? And with this system, Ayub Khan was selected as the uh, president, clear? And electoral college would appoint the president of Pakistan who was to be a Muslim and no less than age of 35. What the basic democracy system Ayub Khan uh, introduced that was of the local councillors at the union council level. They would not select prime minister. They would directly uh, select the president. Clear? Just like in America, just like in uh, Turkey. And the age of the president was considered not less than 35 of years. Clear. The electoral college would consist of 80,000 basic Democrats who were selected by the vote on the people on district, the seal and division and the provincial levels. Under this, the vote on confidence was held and Ayub Khan was declared the next president of Pakistan on the basis of 90 five percent votes clear this was the system of the basic democracy still you listen to the old people about the reforms well the students i think that we should conclude this discussion here that ayub khan introduced the basic democratic system he introduced 1962 constitution as the presidential constitution. Okay. And he accumulated more powers. Next, new capital, human in the infrastructure development of Pakistan, the change of the capital. You know, Karachi was the former capital at 
when Pakistan came into being. But later on, the circumstances, wars, and other internal conflict convinced the authorities to change the capital. And what to be? Okay. And then Islamabad, the current Islamabad was decided. Okay. And it was decided that this huge area should be selected as the capital and there were so many reasons. Ayub Khan wanted to get near the army headquarters which was located in Rawalpindi. Maybe. Ayub Khan wanted to get near to Punjab, KPK and uh, Khabar Pakhtunkhwa because these provinces provided a large amount of troops in Pakistan army. Okay. That is a speculation that Ayub Khan but it is right that by placing Islamabad here, the people of Kashmir, KPK, Punjab, they are equally connected. And it is also reachable for the people of Sindh because the, now the modern infrastructure, roads, motorways, highways, they have uh, reduced the hardships of the time. The temperature of Islamabad was pleasant enough to work. Islamabad was a city that could be developed according to Ayub Khan's plans. Okay. Government officials began to involve themselves in the profitable trade in Karachi instead of their work. Therefore, Ayub Khan founded and shifted the capital from Karachi to Islamabad. It is really uh, something that it is natural that when the government officials involve in the trade and other things, their interest towards the country and to their own job is reduced. And this is a setback here. It is not simply, I mean, we find maximum uh, government servants involved in this activity. Karachi was becoming overcrowded due to massive increase in population. Therefore, it was decided to change it. Dear students, of course, the time later proved that the capital shifting to Islamabad was one of the very intelligent decisions. Okay, because this area is not suit for agriculture, but the environment was quite fit for housing. Okay, this area is also located in one of the very beautiful mountains. Here, the people from all the foreigners from all the regions come and enjoy. This was also not, I mean, it was quite safe rather than Karachi being at the knock and corner. Students, I hope you have understood.